Feeling stuck? Not sure where to go to have a good time for free? Come along, we'll tell you. Yeah, sometimes a vacation seems so overwhelming because of the big it's expense expensive. or the energy around it. You work all the time and the kids just have fun and then you feel like you need a vacation for your vacation. So we'll talk about some um, ways to create that vacation mindset and some out-of-the-box ways to enjoy it that may not break the bank. What? Mama says namaste. Mama says namaste. Making a family can be easy and fun. Oh, yeah, but raising a family can be a whole different story. From spouses to kids to the crazy daily grind, life often directs us away from connection and more into reactive chaos. If you're tired of that cycle and are seeking something beyond the picket fence blues, this is the show for you. I'm Ashley. And I'm Nathan. And we're here to take you from chaos to clarity by bringing awareness and intention into your home, not waiting for one day, and highlighting how the the uniqueness uniqueness in each of us strengthens strengthens all of us. Take a deep breath in and let's start a brand new day. With Mama Says Namaste. There's one thing I'm known for, it's for being kind of cheap. Really? Is yeah, that I what guess. you're known for? Not really. Not at but all. But I don't like to spend money. <laughs> I'm not hanging with a cheap man. <laughs> no, I do like nice stuff. But I don't like to spend money unless I really have to. And sometimes vacations can feel like a very expensive job. Yes. And sometimes you feel like you need a vacation from a vacation because it is so such a such an effort to do it. And Seth Godin Uh, who is a motivational speaker and author um, that we follow and listen to a lot. He says, instead of planning when your next vacation will be, why not create a life you don't want to escape from? Yes, that's wonderful. But I've created this life. What do I do? Now you need to escape from it? Well, that's a good point. (laughs) I guess that's the whole point. All right. So so you create a life and then, yeah, sometimes we feel trapped in it. We are trapped in our duties and our obligations and everything else. And so one aspect of it we've talked about in other podcast episodes, and that's pulling back and just really looking at how do you want your life to flow and what are your top priorities? And is your life really reflecting that? If you say family is important, yet you are nine times out of 10 away from family pulled away to do everything else is your life reflecting that importance. And so there's one aspect of it and we don't, we aren't going to go super deep into that because what we want to give you is vacation ideas that are, um, that are not just the, you know, book a Disney vacation package sort of deal. And so but the first thing is your mindset and yes. the way you approach it. And I had a hard time with this at first. Honestly, with that quote, uh-huh. I would hear that I'm like, yeah, yeah, yes, whatever. <laughs> but I, when I, I remember I going, love that quote. I know, I love it too, in theory. And I didn't <laughs> realize it until I was with you and lived this life with you. I probably would never have realized it without you. But it was with, we were, we went to a friend's house who has this, abs- he was a wealthy fellow, so he did pretty well and he could buy a second home. And instead of buying a second home, he decided to make the home he was in so crazy he didn't want to leave it and so he made this backyard utopia that was unreal and so you go to his house and it's like this is a nice house and you go to his backyard he's like this is a crazy awesome backyard and he loved to share that with people just like you would a vacation home but it was his own home and so it just kind mm-hmm. of changed the whole perspective of you know we were kind of taught to well i live in this house and i have fun in that house you're right. You know? Exactly. It's like and, I shut off fun at these times. And so it is kind of a mindset shift to have fun and live in your house. And so that's kind of what we're talking about here. And that when I met him, that kind of sealed the deal for me. I was like, okay, this is really possible. You have to have a lot of money, but you know, this is possible. So you know, I just share, share that story because it is possible. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's looking at vacation in a different way, taking it out of the traditional. So instead of vacation, meaning that it's the weekend or one week trip down in Florida for spring break, um, it's it's something else. It's looking for creative ways to do that. And so some ways can be within your own home and creating a staycation where it's just intentional downtime. And um, we've talked about the concept of huga, 
which we really dug into when we were discussing the Danish way of parenting. And Huga is this idea of togetherness and really just spending time together in community for the for the goal of connection. And so we want to we want to give you some ideas that are staying at home and then also other ways of travel that maybe do help for for that budget. Right. Because honestly, I I didn't really understand what leisure was until I kind of had psychologically broken through a barrier and and I allowed myself to have that leisure. I mean, I was always kind of a work hard kind of person and nose to the grindstone and you know, there's, there's really, it's just kind of a mindset of an approach of like, okay, I'm going to make sure that I have enough energy to have fun at the end of the day. Or I'm, you know, I'm going to make sure that I intentionally create space in my family to, to connect. Right. Right. Cause we are choosing the life that we live. And so sometimes, uh, we feel like we're drowning and it's, you know, because we are swimming without our feet on the ground. But when we put our feet on the ground, sometimes that's that's the grounding that we need, where we draw some clear lines around what's okay and what's not okay in our life, so that we make sure that we are running our lives and not our life running us. So as we think about you know what what the importance of vacation is, it's it's asking yourself those questions: How are you going to rest, recharge, and connect with the ones you love? If vacation is about that mindset of rejuvenation. How are you going to make yourself and your loved ones a priority in this world? How are you going to recharge your energy? So don't let budget limit you in this. Where there is a will, there is a way. And that's what we want to get to. And and the big aspect of doing that is simply planning. It's being intentional. Yeah. I mean, I remember when you were wanting to go to Costa Rica to see your brother and they had just had twins and... We were trying to figure out how we were going to make that work. And we were making good money at the time, but it wasn't really a situation where I could just leave for that long period of time. And um, and so one of the ways we, we started experimenting with and tried was um, was renting our house out while we were gone. We said, we've got this asset. It's just going to be sitting here. Mm-hmm. Let's try renting it out so that that can help pay for us to to go over there. And so it's just kind of looking at things a little differently. What is around you? Like, what's, what are the diamonds in your backyard? What is right underneath your nose that you haven't thought about that you could kind of twist and say, okay, this is, this isn't, uh, you know, this is, this can be used for multiple purposes, or this has more than just one function that I, this box that I put it in. Right. And we've looked at that in different ways. Like, for example, you know, our assets looking at, okay, can we rent our house? Can we rent our car? Can we rent our RV? Can we rent our gardening tools? Um, There are things that you can do where you can rent things out and in exchange for, you know, for money. And also, yeah, for this opportunity of not having your home um, vacant while you're gone. Um, On that note, another way of doing travel is trusted house sitters. There's a lot of this going and I trusted house sitters is actually a membership site. And I think you pay anywhere between 50 to 200, depending on what your plan is Mm. um, a month or, or a year. That's that's it. And when you do it, then you end up in this, um, you're in this group of people who are listing their homes for free for people to come and stay. And, um, and they just open up their home. You can go and you can just go into, a, you know, in a different neighborhood in a different country and, and really immerse yourself. So it's like your Airbnb. Typically the catch and why you get to stay there for free is that there are animals involved. Well, I mean, I see that as a huge plus. I mean, for our family, um, if we did not have our own pets, that was completely my plan, was for us to go international and for us to hop around from trusted house sitters. Um, At World Schooler Exchange is the same thing. They swap homes, and it's just house swapping between homeschooling families. So both of these are more swapping in exchange for care for their home, care for their animals, and things like that. What a great way to build some cool community and learn about culture as these families, you know, introduce you to their neck of the woods and well, and to be able to, you know, enjoy animals in a different area. Right. And what I found is it creates a more intimate experience rather than being kind of a tourist, you know, mm-hmm. you you are you kind of get the backs back the back alley options of you know, well, you know, there's this place, to, you know, skip this, you know, if you're going to go here, go in the morning. 
uh, you know, that kind of stuff. You get this information or you have access to people who really know and care about the area mm -hmm. and don't really see you as a tourist. They kind of see you as a support system there and they want to help you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So creative ways about either leaving your home when you're gone or ways to go and travel where it's not paying for the places. Now, on that aspect, the not playing, paying for the places thing, another aspect of this is volunteering. And, I mean, take this small within your own backyard all the way to international. Um, and let me explain that. I mean, for, for us, when we're in Venice, there are two things that we do that are volunteer-based. That is, uh, one, one of them is going once a week to the Parrot Outreach Society in Punta Gorda. So we go down there and we, um, we work with parrots, Clara and I do. Now, it's a volunteer gig and it's hard work and it is more cleaning poop and trying to not get bit by a bird <laughs> than anything. Sounds lovely. I know. But for Clara, it's absolute heaven. Like it's the, her joy to be around all of these birds. And I enjoy it for the time that we spend together and, you know, the crazy antics of the birds. And so it's just this fun, um, you know, completely out of the rest of our element, you know, world for us to go step into the world of parrots every week. And we love it. And so, you know, that was a way for us to kind of get out and engage. We also foster kitties. And so we had a whole kitty house of just all of our foster cats. And again, it was like we have a little kitty cation, kitty cation where we go in and we get our kitty therapy and we would just disappear into the into our fifth wheel where we store where we had the kitties uh, fostered and we would just go hang and play with them. And so there's stuff right in your front, you know, right in right around you, ways you can volunteer where it just gets you out of the routine and, and in an experience of just simply being there to serve, which is oftentimes, you know, in vacation mode, it's it's simply being present and available. Well, you yeah. can do that in volunteer status. So there's volunteering right around your your own neighborhood and then there's all around the world there are volunteer opportunities where you can travel to all kinds of different countries and um, either get like a small stipend or free room and board or different things like that there's um, I forgot to even add to the blog post I'll add to this um, I have a blog post that's got links and more information on this and um, so there's also uh, woofers uh, working at Farms. Yes. Uh, shoot. What is it? I don't remember what it what it stands for. Worldwide Organic Farmers Organization, something like that. Waffle. <laughs> Woof. I'm gonna put it in the blog so that you've got it in there. Um, but there are all kinds of great opportunities for um for traveling and adding volunteering in as a way to go and really it's called volunteerism. <laughs> well, and I think the beautiful thing about it is it can be anywhere from, like you said, your backyard to the other side of the planet. It just depends on what your budget is and your capabilities are. And the idea, really, and the whole thing that we've kind of realized about you know, the, the vacation mindset is it's, it's letting go of your daily grinding and trying something new. It's going somewhere new. Well, that can be on the other side of town. Mm -hmm. That can be, you know, on the other side of the state, the other side of the country, the world. Like I said, it can get bigger and bigger the more you figure this out. But that's what's fun about changing your mindset to this is the possibilities become endless. And it's just in your backyard if you wanted. You, know, mm -hmm. you, you could not go anywhere than your own backyard and have just as much fun. Right, right. It's because it's getting into the new. It's the experience of, okay, this is this is interesting. This is different. Let's get through this. Just like travel is. You know, sometimes it's... You go. You show up to the hotel, and it wasn't what you were expecting, or the Airbnb, and the or the place isn't. The pictures were great, but they didn't show you anything around the area. <laughs> right. And so it's just that kind of stuff that, you know, you you never know. Trying something new is important. Right. I mean, it's so much the essence of how we started our whole travels was getting to the what's the feeling behind the goal? <laughs> I want to travel. Why? To experience that feeling of awe, of curiosity, of being so present in the moment because it's this new beautiful thing to see. How can we create more of that in our daily lives? And so we did. We created more vacation moments throughout our life. 
Um, so if you are looking at traveling and going in going somewhere, you know, another thing is looking at your credit card rewards. We use our credit card just like a debit card for the point of racking up rewards so that when we say, hey, we want to go to Costa Rica, we've got our flights covered. Yep. And so that's a way to pay attention to working on flights and things like that. So airplane is not, you know, that's not a part of it. Um, another thing is using the price war sites. You know, you can use Priceline and Expedia and things like that. And sometimes you can get some really great deals. My parents do this a ton. Um, I have not done it. Of course, flying and <laughs> flying in hotels are not our jam because of Kids us having an RV and pets. Um, we, we go different routes often. But you know, for my parents, they'll oftentimes put in, you know, just uh, put in a name that price option and she they can often get, you know, a four star hotel for a pretty reasonable price. So um, so there are ways to, you know, to use the budget things to um, to do more of a traditional vacations as well. Then there's simply looking at free things to do. We have traveled to all 48 states and we have done something extravagant in every single one. And with that, um, we have we have two place two states where we say these are these are places where we would say it's worth spending money. <laughs> mm. Because so much, all of the things that we have done are free. Granted, we have a state national state parks pass because whenever we've done this, we've had a fourth grader actually. So we've had a fourth grade pass to be able to go through and travel um, because you get a free pass. Um, Thinking just on that note, national parks passes and um, state parks and things like this. There are lots of ways you can get free access. Um, First off. If you if you want to contribute, do it's to our parks and it's great to pay for the pass. It's not that expensive. Um, other ways of getting access to the pass, though, is if you are a, a fourth grade student, you get a free pass for a year. Also, if you have any disability, this can include something such as diabetes. I have a niece who has a lifetime pass because she has type one diabetes, and so she's got a lifetime pass to the national parks. So there are there are ways to get access and get free access for places with um, with things like that. If you're a military veteran, you can get um, different discounts or free access to places as well. Um, so look for that. Ask locals. There are always parks, libraries. Oftentimes there's museums walking around downtown. I mean, St. Louis, there's like, you've got free access to the museum, to the, um, let's see, you've got your art museum, your science center, and your zoo are all free. And uh, St. Louis is one of the few places where we say also City Museum is worth every penny and is not is a, a museum you would expect at all. So look up City Museum in St. Louis. It's amazing. Giant playground. Um, so look for, and that one's not free, but it's worth it. <laughs> so um, look for those free things that you can do in different areas. Also look for free sh- transportation. You may have mass transit options, free trolleys. Um, may- there may be plenty of places that are within bo- walking or biking distance. You can also look at what daily rentals there are, you know, cars or bikes or anything else. We found a great place in Venice that is for bikes and they will, you basically call them and they'll drop a bike off anywhere and pick it up anywhere in Venice. And so you can use it for when you need it and not worry about lugging it anywhere. All right, we talked about things for houses as well another thing is about food this is a big one yes. and a big expense especially if you've got a family so two ways that we do we navigate food one of them is cooking our own meals as much as possible first off we're spoiled because nathan is an amazing chef and we love everything he he cooks and half the time we're comparing it to restaurant food and it doesn't it doesn't add up <laughs> so hmm. We, um, we love our food at home, and we know we can cook cheaper at home. Um, for example, when we went to, um, to Costa Rica, we went to uh, kind of their version of Costco, and we got this huge bag of refried beans. Yeah, two gallons of refried back black beans. Yes, if like you want to see the big bag and Nathan squeezing it onto our tortilla, <laughs> it's on the blog post that goes with this. And... Um, so we used that, um, you know, going to Costa Rica, it's not that cheap to eat. Yeah. People will tell you, oh, once you get down there, the food, everything's cheap. It's not really the case. No. Not our experience. And this was, what, seven years ago. This was in 2015. 
2015, yeah. Yeah, this was in 2015 is when we went down there. And yeah, and it's not it's not known for being a foodie country. Like you're not going there necessarily for the food aspect of it anyway. And it's more expensive or it's it's not cheap anyway. And so here we were with three small kids and, you know, looking at how we could work our budget. And so one thing we did was oftentimes we made our own food at home. Another thing we would do is we would often cook our daughters who were young at this point. So we had three, six and nine year olds. We have little kids coming with us here. And instead of paying for the big fancy meals out, we'd feed them at home and then they'd go and they could split a dessert or split an an appetizer. And then we're getting one dessert for three children while Nathan and I enjoy a nice entree that maybe we split or maybe we get two. Um, Let me tell you. You will be able to have a conversation at that dinner table while your <laughs> children are smacking on ice cream or cake or whatever. Because they, they won't ask you to cut it up for them. Right. They won't ask you to say, this tastes funny. They'll gobble it up and there'll be silence. And uh-huh. you'll be able to hang out just like you had an iPhone out there, but it's no iPhone. <laughs> It is true. When we did that, it was great because we had children showing up at the restaurant with full bellies who were excited and on good behavior for the treat they were going to be getting. (laughs) And And we kind of got our date night. Right. And we kind of got our date night. So, yeah. So we use creative ways to do it. I know oftentimes when we talk about going out to eat, going out to eat is expensive. I mean, we calculated the other day there's a, a restaurant that we love to go to that is amazing food and we absolutely love it. They also are known for amazing drinks. Um, and we're talking like juices and stuff, things that the girls can get as well. But just to get drinks, that's $50. Before we ever put food on our plates, it was $50 just to get the drinks. And so we look creatively at restaurants. Restaurants for us is an experience. It's not to fill our bellies. Restaurants are an experience to enjoy something. And so then we look at what do we want to enjoy? Do we want to go and we just want to try a drink? Do we want to go and try an appetizer or a dessert or an entree? And if we do go and we get food, we often eat out family style. So we order, you know, two to four for our family as they're growing. We have to we have to do a bit more. But um, we order more food, but we we split it all up family style because the truth of the matter is the way we eat at home is way different portion size than what they serve at a restaurant anyway. Well, it's a good habit also to start teaching your kids about food waste, which is a huge problem in this country. And yes. We throw away a ton of food. And, I mean, I even watch really thoughtful people, you know, load their kids up with plates full of food that they're never going to eat. Right. And <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my gosh. And so, you know, that it just it creates a, re- a level of accountability for them where, okay, if I want more, I can always get more. But I'm going to be used to being satisfied with what's in front of me. And maybe sp- and maybe that means splitting up and sharing. Right. We, we're very big on, not, on zero food waste in our household. Um, it, that started really intensely when we hit the road. Um, because we, we don't have room to have things just sitting back and rotting in our fridge. It's an itty bitty little fridge. And we, um, and we don't have room for leftovers. And we we really got, or Nathan really got skilled with cooking for the for the meal, cooking just enough to tide us over for that meal, um, and we didn't don't have a garbage disposal at our house in Venice or are on the road, and so you know we we're eating that last grain of rice at the bottom of the bowl because I don't want to clean it out of the food th- food mm-hmm. thing after the sink, so with all of that we really get to the point of zero food waste, not the forcing children to finish their plate it's not about forcing ourselves to eat until we're stuffed it's about only putting a small amount knowing that we're coming from at it from an abundance mindset if we need more we'll get more but we don't have to start with everything the huge platter (laughs) yeah it's just coming at it from an abundance mindset and starting small and, and adding two instead all right and and then with this and on the eating aspect or the staying at home, you know, you can do an international staycation just in your own country or in your own city or hometown um, by just being intentional and focusing on, you know, different uh, different countries at different times. You know, today is Mexico Day. We're going to go eat at a Mexican restaurant. We're going to listen to mariachi music and we're going to fix nachos for dinner that night. 
you know, and then you and we're going to learn about Mexico and we're going to pull up a Mexican movie, you know, and, and all of a sudden you have a whole Mexico themed day where you traveled to Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of cool ways you can do it. We did um, for a while. We got a monthly subscription for. Uh, oh, shoot. What is it called? Yum. Yum box and in international yum. That's international what it was. yum. International yum box. And you get a box every month from a different country and it's all these snacks and treats from that country. And you learn why they like these snacks. That's why, the thing. It's not just important. A, yeah, it's not just fluff. It's super educational because it comes with all these facts and trivia and information about the country, um, things that are like just the cultural local things. And then all of the snacks in it, it has descriptions as to why it's cool. You know, what's the what's the cool thing with it? And so um, it's yeah, so it's super it's, it's a great way to open, you know, open us up to new taste buds, new tastes and everything and also learn a culture. You can even go on their website and listen to, you know, music from that country and different things like that. I remember when we got the Scandinavia box and we went down a, a long path. I pulled out uh, C.R. Rose and Bjork, which were music that I listened to when I was younger too. And I got all the candy because nobody liked licorice. <sighs> yeah, well, no. We actually learned that our oldest loves salted black licorice, which I think yeah. is the nastiest thing ever. <laughs> Oh, that sounds awful. Anyway, so, you know, doing that, get, you know, subscribe to Universal Yums and then go and then follow the theme of the country and dig into what the countries are. Um, at Christmas time, they have a holiday box where it's just Christmas treats from all over different countries. So as you can see, like I can get excited about traveling to these places, even without leaving home. I but mean, just having see, it shipped to one location. It's easy to see how traveling is a state of mind, though, because it's just. It's playing to your curiosity. It's going and out and exploring. It's trying something new and getting out of your rut. Exactly. And one last thing. This is one I'm really planning on doing. At some point, I still I have it know. on my bucket list. I, <laughs> I talk about. I've talked about this for as long as we've been married. Well, I read it in an O an O magazine. Uh, By the time we get around to it, they'll be closed. They won't do it anymore. Yeah. Well, actually, I just saw the update. I went on it today because yeah. I double checked the link. And for 2023, um, the full on mystery tour is suspended. But they've got a modified mystery tour where you pick the location. But then they they help you. But the point of this is, though, and this is the way that they've done it, is that you go on to Magical Mystery Tours and you fill out all this information. And it's super thorough to really cover so that you don't you aren't in a situation that you that you don't like, you know, and it covers, you know, do you like animals? Do you like drinking? Are you introverted, extroverted? Do you mm. like mountains? Do you like water? You know, all of these different things to really get a feel for what who you are and what you want. And then they essentially and they give and you you give them a budget and then they essentially curate a whole vacation package for you. And it sounds amazing. And they do traditional vacation packages as well. And so right now it sounds like they've got kind of a modification of the in-between. But I thought that was the coolest thing. And when I originally came upon it, I thought, well, oh my gosh, like $2,000 for a vacation. I could never imagine spending that much for a vacation. And so I didn't, uh, I didn't look at it at that time. But, you know, now I'm, I'm looking at it in a different way and looking at different ways that it could be used. And, and again, What's our purpose for money? Why are we why are we doing it for and where would that money go elsewhere? All I'm hearing is you like to be surprised. I do. I love the surprise. But you hate it when I jump out and scare you. Oh, I like to be surprised, <laughs> not scared. There are two different emotions you just explained and we can pull out Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart and I'll explain the difference no, between no, surprise no. and good. scare. We're good. We're good. <laughs> or fear. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the magical mystery tours just sounds like such a fun thing. So there are so many ways. And hey, on that note, you know, maybe it's not magical mystery tours. Maybe it's selling the friend that knows you well or somebody or your your partner or whatever. You know, hey, let's do a surprise. There you go. And you each do a little bit of something. And you can even do that again in your own hometown. Let's do a surprise date. Surprise, you know, weekend getaway. Order her something she wouldn't normally eat. There you go. That's fun. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, on that note, yeah, that was one thing for a, a year, I think, for a, a good year. A year or two, maybe. A good year or two, um, 
I decided I had made enough decisions with for everything else and I had so many uh, things going that I didn't want to decide what to eat. I enjoyed food and I trusted Nathan implicitly. So I said, hey, how about you order for me? And he ordered everything for me. Every time we would go out to eat, I didn't even look at the menu. Which a lot of waiters and waitresses would look at me as like this chauvinistic Right, this Dude, super controlling guy. I'll have this and the lady will have that. <laughs> right. But I absolutely loved the surprise and he would order things that I was not, I, w- I wouldn't you have really gotten would on not, my, You really no, okay would not have, some of them. Well, I wouldn't have first. ordered them, but, but well, I Then you're like, you're it. good. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun and it expanded my taste bed. So it was really fun to just play the game of, you know, giving somebody you trust opportunity to choose for you. And what did they choose? And... Yeah. Or are you going to be okay with that? Exactly. Yeah. Letting go. An opportunity ah, letting go, which is. definitely is the vacation mindset I was working on. There you go. Letting go of the agenda. I mean, that's the bottom line, I think, is a lot of these concepts are just real basic. Like mm-hmm. letting go, having fun, doing something new, trying something new. And this can be done in a thousand different ways, right mm-hmm. in your backyard or on the other side of the country. Right. Or planet. Right. So think about vacation in a different light. Don't think about it as having to save up. It's going to be the two weeks or the one week in Destin, Florida, and then it's over and afterward you have a month to recover from all the craziness and tension it took to get there. Vacation is a mindset. How are you recharging and how are you going to find some joy and some fun this week with your family? What are one of the many things that we listed here which one could you guys talk about and get intentional about doing and creating in your home? Go to the blog post that goes along with this. Like I said, there's links for a lot of the stuff that we discussed in here where you can click through and dig deeper. So, uh, and let us know um, on that blog post. I encourage you to type in there. What, where, where are you going? What are you doing? How have you taken this to create something fun and creative in your home? Mm -hmm. And along the way, get to know each other, play, have fun, and celebrate how the the uniqueness in each of us strengthens strengthens all of us. us. Namaste. Namaste. Two, three. Up with the rising sun, already on the run. Namaste, namaste. Life is a tangled mess, then you don't have to stress. Namaste. Stay there.